And forgive me because I was thinking yeah. about how I would apply it in my class. So if you said this and I missed it, I am okay. saying I would be embarrassed. But when you say pure facilitators, do you mean mm -hmm. students in the class or students who've had the class before, or what do you mean? The latter. So people okay. who've are, and you know, it's a brand new class, so we didn't really have people who've <laughs> done it before. But uh, so I'm hoping to recruit students who are interested in some leadership training okay. who come back um, and service. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was thinking about before you start talking about uh -huh. your facilitators, what would I do? How would I make that happen? I have two questions before I could answer it in my own head. One yeah. is how many students are in your class? So in the fall there were like ninety five, in the okay. spring there are forty five. So we're again we're trying to figure out what's the where are we gonna level out and where do we wanna be. So um, And do they see this document before they come to class the day you have to answer those questions, or they see the they see time. what yeah. So they have to fill this out as individuals okay. and turn it in before they come to class. So the other thing I should mention is we also have them fill out what's called a group effort analysis, where they and we switch the groups around periodically. Um, and so at the end of a period of time, when they work with a group of students, they have to evaluate their peers and how they contributed in the group. And one of the things we ask them to evaluate is. Were they ready? Did they come ready to contribute to making the key to the learning guide? Um, so they see all these questions. They've, they've had them for almost a week as individuals before they come. And then the idea is that now you all have your individual answers. Now you should talk amongst yourselves and your group and generate the best possible answer to number five that you can come up with. And how and many are in the group? Um, six. And if we introduce peers, we'll probably go take that down to five. So there's a seat for the peer. Mm -hmm. So, so I've got so it's six because of the pod. Yeah, because the there's just the yeah, there's six seats at a um, table. So I've got uh, questions about the exam. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe three questions. One is, um, does the does the exam look like the learning guide? Like how big is the exam and do the answers, are you having essay questions that they write descriptions or what's the exam and is there a reason, when, uh, does the exam present students a reason for hoarding information they wouldn't want to share or, you know? Yeah, like I understand. It's not a curve grading. It's right? absolutely not curved. We grade, absolute grading. Um, and the, the exams as a whole, so here's it's another piece of information, only count for 60% of the grade. We did that on purpose because we knew we wanted to have freshmen. Um, and we knew that they might not be that savvy about how to take exams yet. Um, so the exams cover the same information. Thus far, they're uh, a combination, but mostly multiple choice. So when we had like 100 students, in the fall, um, but there's always uh, a, a problem solving question on there that is a, almost, it's like an isomorphic question from one of the group problems we did in class. So it'll be a very similar but different application of the same concept. So the quick answer is no, it doesn't look like this. The exams don't look like this. The exams are have been multiple choice but not entirely multiple choice. And I feel it would be my preference to not use multiple choice, but we are constrained by how much TA support we have and grading support that we have. So, um, and once we figure out where the class size will stabilize, then I think we could probably get into um, a groove. It was not insignificant to grade the open-ended problems. And last fall, it's not a big deal this spring because we have too many fewer students. Mm -hmm. So then my, my last question mm -hmm. is, because um, there are several exams, and so have you seen an evolution in student answers on the learning guides? As after the first exam, I think this is gonna be a more useful way, or now I have the energy to work on this learning guide because I know yeah. it makes a difference. Do, do you see that? So. I haven't tracked that. I don't know that for sure. When the students, so we also do exam wrappers, if you know what that is. So it, the exam yeah. wrapper that we use is. Um, can you help? Can you explain what the exam wrapper? 
Yeah. So it's something that you have them do right after they take an exam and they get the results back from their exam. And ours have three parts. So the first part is tell me, tell yourself really, that's what they're doing, what did I do to prepare for this exam? We give them, I could hold on this up so you can see that. We give them a lot of things like I did the Bernie guide before I came to class and I read. Or I studied right after, I rewrote my notes. I studied, you know, so all the different things that we can think of, some of which are unique to our class, but some are just general good study habits and strategies. Um, so that's the first part. And that, as you might imagine, has the, you know, the subtle um, motivation to just try to get them to see, oh, I could have been doing that. I didn't even know I could have been doing that, right? So there's this long list. So they indicate whether they always did that or whether they never did it. They did it occasionally or they did it regularly. So they can self-assess what they've been doing. The second part of the exam wrapper is look at every question that you missed. So we dedicate a discussion time to this. They get their exam back. And then indicate why you missed that. Think about why you, like, I didn't know the material. I panicked. I, and so there's a whole table of possible reasons why, why you might have missed something so that they can see, oh my gosh, I'm just really freaking out. Or I knew it, but I didn't know it well enough. I, you know, I, my knowledge wasn't deep enough. So that's the second part. And then the third part is, um, what am I, they have just a series of questions. What am I doing that's working well? Um, what are some ideas I have for what I should be doing differently the next time? And then the third part, is there anything the teaching team can do differently to help you learn? So I haven't had the time to systematically go back and look at those. We share those back with them so that they can reflect. But I haven't analyzed the data in terms of what they said they did, what they said they were going to do. So that, and then on the sub, after the first exam when we do that, we also ask them, so did you do any of the things that you said you were going to do, that you told yourself you were going to do after that last one? Um, so I feel like there's a lot of rich data in there and I just haven't had time to look at it to see, like for those who say, yeah, I did what I said I was gonna do and now I did better. Because I'd really like to, maybe this summer I'll have some time to dig into that and show it to the next class and say, you know, the people who do this do well in this class. These are things you can try. So I don't, I think the answer to your question exists and I don't know it yet because I don't know <laughs> I think we could probably do a whole act of teaching lab on um, things like exam wrappers and other metacognitive things for yeah. students to sort of think about what it was they did or didn't do and how they might be able to do it. If you look at some of our previous ones on, on learning analytics, um, pattern and what's the other one, analytics and recommendation, um, I think that we're starting to see more and more tools become available that students and instructors can use to sort of go over those, that, that data um, to go back and say, what have I done as an instructor? What have my students done as students? And even for the students to say, what have I done as a student? Um, so that might be a really good one to, to revisit. Today, let's actually go through and, and look at a collaboration. Um, I've got the sign-in sheet. I think you guys are all part of the campus active, unless you didn't sign in. Active oh, teaching lab, unless you didn't sign in. And you're also all <laughs> part of Mary Evanson's. Mary Evanson's here. Um, and you're all part of the collaboration. Oh, do you already create it? Yeah, one? there is one. I forgot about it. Yes. All right, so I'm going to have to go ahead and demonstrate how to make one. But I will. So in the Canvas course, in all of your Canvas courses, unless you have it hidden, um, there's an option for collaborations here. I've just done that. And um, if you have never started a Google collaboration before, I think there's some information on the on how to do that on the activity sheet. But if you have, I obviously have been in several of them. Um, so I can just click on this little start new collaboration there, and it's kind of it's kind of a neat way to do this. Um, Janet, you have everybody in the whole class in one group for this collaboration, right? Right, they're all working on the same one document together. 
And if you've ever worked on a Google Doc with more than five people, you know how exciting that will be. So with 95 or even 45 people, it can probably be really exciting. Um, one question that I had for you, Janet, was if I start a new collaborate, collaborative doc, that's a blank document. Right. Then do you have to paste in, or does one of your students paste in the learning guide, like the blank learning guide text? Yeah, I, well, I was just trying to figure out how to use it, so I've done it myself. Um, I usually make it that morning. We have class in the afternoon, so I make it that morning, and then I add my co-instructor and the TAs and email them and say, can you see it? <laughs> and then they're like, yeah, looks good. And then I give it all the students to access, essentially before I walk down to class. So, so they have cut and paste your entire course. Class no, 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 just that it. learning guide, which is I mean, sitting at my desktop as a Word document. So I just copy the blank one, and then I just paste it into a Google Doc, and it just appears. And then I fill out mm -hmm. the little table at the bottom, though, that says who, which groups need to do which questions. So. And ahead of time, they, they have the, the original Word doc because they're doing it ahead of time and right. turning it in, and then you create the right the Google yeah. doc. Yeah, so I've already done the work of making the learning guide. I don't know. It's, it's just a matter of copying and pasting it into the collaborative space then. And so you can add, it's really easy to add. The first time I did this, we just kind of did a dry run last uh, fall. And I thought I'd added all the students, but something wasn't working right. And John said they updated it since then. But it, they were added, but they couldn't get in. So in the middle of class, the first time we tried this, I had to quickly run to my computer and say, I had like 100 emails that said, can you give me access? I was like, yes, 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 yes. <laughs> but then we realized as soon as I started that as soon as somebody was in, they could let other people in. So then the whole class just like snowballed and they started letting everybody in. So it was fine. And then it was, that didn't happen in this spring when we like really did it for real. So it, I, we haven't had any problems like that since. That was the thing that we discovered that it will get Interesting. What's that? Setting up another one. Your student has logged into your personal Google account. Oh, right. yeah. This is all Wismail. So we always say to them, you need to get in on your Wismail or have somebody else invite you on the Gmail. I don't care if they're going on their Gmail, but what's in this, I say, I'm inviting your Wismail because that's what's in the system. They they get it to their Wismail. Yeah, you yeah. will if you have your notifications set up that way, or if you just go into Canvas and go to Collaborations if you've been added. Uh, we'll all see this one. We go to the edit of that, of one of them, so they can see what the, so when you're setting one up, you can go through and pick every student to yeah, be included, and then it'll show up in there. And then Margie will show up over here, boom. And then take her off. Yeah. Yeah, if your notifications are set up to alert you by email, if your notifications are on, but yeah, I think the default is on, so unless they changed it, yes. Charles is in here. Emily? No, Emily's not here either. Jacob's not here. Jeff's not here. Sarah's not here. Sarah Jeff? No, it's not. Oh, there's a Mike's not here. Who's not here? Uh, yeah, I mean, there were some extras from people who signed up and didn't show, I figured. Right. Yeah. James, still here? I am still here. Awesome. students just create that um, on their own. If we had groups set up here, so you're using groups throughout a, a semester, it's easy to just click on, you know, these are the groups that I want to work together. And that would work as well. So go ahead and open up your um, Active Teaching Lab Monday, April 17th, and see what you get. You got text on your document already. Did that happen automatically, or did somebody already add stuff? Oh, somebody's nice. Somebody's already added. 
Did you already have stuff, Karen? Yeah. Yep. All they right. Created, uh, created now, run dead in your name. Yeah. Yeah. I'm following them. Such and such. Thank you. Fantastic. All right. So it's easy. <laughs> and you can have it, um, again, if you wanted to have like group one, group two, you could work together on different things. Um, and if you had documents, uh, texts that you wanted them to answer the questions, as Janet did with learning guides, somebody, any one of them you could say, somebody paste that in, and generally there's a student that's happy to do that. Um, and that's that. So hop into the activity sheet and start working on different things and pull <laughs> on your own. And we'll give you a couple of minutes to do that. Oh, do you want to explain what the set up a second profile is? Oh. Okay, I will do it since it's me who had the problem. Okay. So that first, um, the easy one on the thing, it says Chrome users set up a second profile. So the problem I was running into was that, right, so my Chrome browser is set up to my Gmail, personal Gmail, and so whenever I tried to log into a collaboration through Canvas, it would not let me switch to my WISC account because the Chrome browser itself was my personal. So what I ended up doing was just adding a, another person is what Chrome calls it, and I just named it UW Karen. So when I want to use Google Collaborations through Canvas, I just open my UW Karen browser, and then it functions. Not everybody that I've talked to has the problem that I have. It seems to be random. I'm not, I really can't figure it out. But that is something that I figured out worked for me anyway. So if you have that problem, it might be a good strategy. And all you have to do is click up where your name is up there for his that's regarding John. And I have, oh yeah, see, he's got his too. So, and I just flip to that one if I'm gonna go to Google Cloud. I had to do that too. But you okay. can also do multiple, I have like four <laughs> Gmail accounts for different things mm -hmm. and you can set it up. Sure. That way. But I had to do that as well. One of the yeah. things that's really weird, especially with the latest Google LTI integration. So Google has, I'm sorry, Canvas has built this integration with Google where you can embed stuff using their Canvas's cool tool. It's not a cool tool at all. It's a terrible tool because even if you've set it up for your students so that anybody anywhere can get into that document and start collaborating with it, if you use the Google tool to embed it, your students will see this mm -hmm. if they're logged in with their personal email up here. And that means that they're going to be like, I can't get to the assignment unless they know enough about, and this is something I never think about what's up in this one. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because at the tab level, I'm signed into Google Docs with my WISC account. So I think I'm, I know I'm signed in with my WISC account. But at the browser level, I'm signed in with my personal account. Mm -hmm. And Canvas requires that. So if I go back over to the top of this program, if I go back into it with my WISC account now, so I click into that, and it opens up a whole new window for me. Now I can go back into that course and re-sign in. Again, pain in the butt for a student to have to go through all of this. Now I can see the one that was logged in. Oh, oh, that looks like a screenshot. Oh, this is a screenshot, yeah, okay. That's it. But yep, there it is, there's the one that I've signed in, because now I'm signed in with my wisc.edu at the browser level, rather than at the window level, rather than at the tab level. And I think that's where it is. Yeah. Sometimes, now sometimes the collaboration thing works regardless of whether you're logged in with your personal or your WISC and some, but every time the embedding does not work if they're logging in with the WISC IDU thing. So I only do the iframe embeds and not use the tool. I explain about that in the back page. Oh, yeah.
set up group one versus group, not versus group two, but. Yeah. I think one way is, again, with the project-based stuff is to say, all right, you guys work on your project and you guys work on your project and in one week I want you to pitch to each other what you're doing. What's that? Do you do that? Well, we tried something like that. So oh. at the beginning, we, yeah, I, I'd forgotten because we stopped it pretty quickly. Because um, <laughs> that was a horrible No! Yeah. <laughs> I was like, this isn't working. So the, the first time we, the first few times we did it, they keyed their answers, right? Their groups keyed their answers. And then the next 15 minutes, we made what we called the heterogeneous group. So then we mixed it up, and so like you would go in a group, and you would be responsible. You were supposed to teach what the answers were to your questions yeah, to the rest of the yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. right. They literally just sat and read their answers to each other. It was so I, I was like I'm bored, and I'm just watching you. So we stopped doing that because they just did not. Yeah, they were really flat about how they were doing it, and I just had no ideas about how to get them to be. More excited and owning their answers. Yeah. So I'm wondering if, um, so so I do writing groups a lot in my class. So I'm just wondering if there's a way that writing could figure in, like some kind of what students really love is is like getting to know each other. I think. Mm -hmm. So is there something like uh, a way to have some kind of prompt? some low stakes kind of prompt that they all need to write and then share with each other, which I'll say they hate too, but they actually, a lot of the time, they sort of love it because it's this risky mm -hmm. thing that, that they have to do. And then, I don't know. Like I, I think you you're on to something. The, yeah. you know, owning your answer for a learning guide for a, a kinesiology class where the, I, the it's not my answer. It came from the book on page, you know, 47. I just looked it up, so I'm not really, it's not my it's answer. It's not something I want to share. Right. I mean, you can go look it up on page 47, too, if you want. So, yeah, I would, I would read that answer, too. But, yeah, is it some, like, here's how this is, this area is connecting with our project or the thing that we're doing. Um, that brings in sort of that connection between the content and the imaginative way that we're using it. Or, or something, yeah. And we just, we were trying, we know that when you have to teach something to somebody else, you really learn it well. So right. we're like trying to introduce an opportunity to do that. But then we work on different things more. Just you say you can't use words. Just say you can't use words. Right. Minutes, okay? <laughs> so. Ruth. What was the, um, the biology class where students had to make they had to um, illustrate concepts, but not talk through a concept, but illustrate something. So some students made videos, there, and there was a video about the disease, and, and you know where a bunch of students knocked on a door of a dorm room and burst in and took over. That the was room. Intro Bio 152. Yeah. Um, that is still one of my favorite ever. That was fan that was fantastic. Things. It was 2010, it was part of the Digital Media Awards and the Engage program at um, UAD Academic Technology. And um, yeah, so we had folks create one, like this is one of my favorite ones because it, oh, except for the ads. Not a lot of ads. In one second, skip, okay. So this guy's actually talk, you might recognize this from Inception, this music. So that's going to get probably kicked. No, we're going to have an ad on it. Oh, Just like that's why they have the ad on it. Right. They talked to the composer of this, and like one of the members of the group, that was their specialty, they were in digital composition, audio stuff. So they're like, I'm going to go talk to that, and we're going to use that as the background for our stop motion construction paper, how RNA passes into the nucleus thing. So this was a fantastic session. Um, thing. This is totally off topic of Google collaborations, by the way. <laughs> but they're, they, 
they pitched the product, this was over the semester, they had to fact check everything, they put together storyboards, they put together a rough draft of it, and then they put together a final cut. They had to like fact check everything with, with the professors that were in the thing, they checked with other groups. It was kind of an amazing, amazing thing. I think this is Twizzlers. Yeah. Like licorice and, and there's another one. At, um, I like the, the dorm room one. The dorm room one. Um, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, there, there are some great ones. The reputation of virus actually never by a gram from Anyway, you don't do mad intro bio. Technology. You search for that, you'll be able to see through all of them. Mine is a humanities course, but I do something. They're not that advanced, <laughs> like the, but they do a creative project at the end of the semester, and they're always like they're way better than any paper that they could write. You know, they do like last semester, some students got a group of people, and they all stood on State Street and asked people to draw pictures of what they thought the American dream looked like, and they assembled it into a book, and then talked about how it related to class. Or one of them made like one group made a serial style podcast about the murder of Radio Raccoon and do the right thing. They do a lot of creative stuff, and I think the they don't necessarily collaborate with other groups, but the creative element of it brings a sense of ownership and also competition in a weird way. But competition in terms of doing their best like job. Like want to do, yeah, yeah, like want to do something really cool and interesting, and they, um, and we talk about being aware, beware of a cool idea, right, you know, that you want to also have it be relevant. But I think there's something about the, the, maybe the creative element of that, that still relate, it still relates to the subject, right? It's still investigation of what we're talking about, but that's different than just. It lets them bring their own expertise and interests into right, it. Right. So if they want to do videography of interviews on State Street, somebody's right. interested in that, exactly. that gives them a way to do it. If they want to do paper mache stuff, yeah. they can do that. If they, they bring whatever their group has to bring to it. And I think it's a good way to have them it's a good idea to have them look at others. And that way, somebody's not like, oh yeah, we're just gonna do this lame thing. Mm -hmm. You know, They might plan on doing the lame thing because it's just for the class, but then they see what this other group is doing that's really cool, and they're like, you guys, we can't do the lame thing anymore. We've gotta, we've gotta <laughs> up our game. Yeah. So there is that also, there is a little bit of that pure competition, but it's not like the same rules, because we can make up our own rules to show that. So do you ever have students just like, not feel not creative and not do think I can't think of what I could what we could possibly do. They're in groups, so usually there's somebody Some that kind of pulls them along. But that's like a whole other conversation of how many students how many students I get that will preface their comments by saying, Well, I'm not an artist, but yeah. I'm not a creative person, but I was like, who told you that? <laughs> You're a human yeah. being. Like oh, well, I get you know, but that's yeah, and they say that and I give them some sort of like out of the box, you could just do this, mm -hmm. you know, these simple frames. But then there's usually, you just need like one person in the group that's got a little. And models. Like yeah. if you, and have, then show a bunch if of you have a set of models yeah. from previous semesters of what students have done, the previous semester students have set the bar here. And now all the people will be like, oh, we could do something like that, but better yeah. or differently or whatever. And I show one where the video, like the execution is kind of crappy because yeah. they're not tech. But the idea was so cool that it was a really great project, you know, to get them up with that fear. And but that's not about collaborating in Google Docs. You'll see a lot of those <laughs> <in> <laughs> bad intro bio as well. Like, they're not all beautiful. They don't all have <laughs> professional soundtracks, but they're fine.